Hello Wargamers, I'm Vasa Ramnus and today I want to talk about the Remora Drone Stealth Fighter. Uh, it's one of the units from Forge World for Tau. It's in the uh, Imperial Armor 3 Taros campaign book. Uh, so it just recently got updated a few months ago. Um, and yeah, so before we get actually started talking about it, I just want to say thanks for watching. If you like this video, I think you know what to do. Hit that like button, right? And uh, of course, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Let me know what you think of the Remora um, there as well. And you know, if you want to subscribe to my channel for more awesome videos, I'm not going to complain. That helps out a bunch. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. On with the uh, content you actually care about, though. Uh, let's talk about the Remora. So, like I said, it's from Forge World. Cool model. Um, has the ability to be folded up like this, so these wings are uh, movable. And that's awesome from a practical standpoint because you don't have to store this, you know, wide model like that. You get it folded up like that. But it's also awesome from a fluff standpoint because if you had a bunch of drones, you, I think you'd want them folded up like this, just like uh, fighter pilots on a... Um, or fighter planes on a aircraft carrier, uh, the drone can fold up like this and it's pretty darn sweet. So, hey, it's worth it right there, right? Um, moving on to the rules though, the more is Ballistic Skill 3, the only drone um, in the Tau arsenal that has Ballistic Skill 3, so that's pretty awesome. Then uh, it's a 10-10-10 flyer with two hull points, all for 90 points. It gets a black sun filter, networked marker light, so it can use its own marker lights once it hits. Uh, two seeker missiles, which you can see right down here. Boop. And uh, twin linked long barrel burst cannon, which has a range of 36 inches, strength 5, AP 5, like all pulse weapons, and is heavy 6. The drone is also shrouded. So, um, yeah, pretty cool. Um, Let's talk about the pros to begin with, and then we'll get to some of the drawbacks later on and talk about some uh, strategies as a whole with that. Pros, uh, for 90 points, you get a respectable amount of firepower. So you have a 36 inch range uh, pulse weapon, right? Heavy six twin links. So that's the same number of hits at a longer range than 10 fire warriors, so you're already breaking even on a points basis with a group of fire warriors here. So you need 10 fire warriors in order to make the same number of hits. Um, so not bad. Plus you're flying, plus you're shrouded, plus you got a marker light, plus you got seeker missiles. Um, that's not a bad deal at all. So respectable amount of firepower for the cost. Um, the long barrel burst cannon uh, can actually do some. Uh, okay damage to soften up infantry units. It can also be used to uh, take out rear armor on light vehicles. So if you get some, uh, you know, rear armor 10, this guy, because he's a flyer, he can come in and uh, get at that pretty easily, which is nice. Um, and of course, most flyers are pretty low armor value. So the long barrel burst cannon can do some damage there as well, um, especially with the network marker light that it can use to shoot off um, shoot off its seeker missiles in a way that ignores cover, right? Because if you use a marker light to shoot a seeker missile, it ignores cover. It does not require line of sight or anything like that. Of course, uh, the Remora has line of sight to it because he's shooting it in the first place, so that's kind of a, a moot point. But it does ignore the cover, which is nice. Um, so it really does have a, a good application at taking out enemy flyers in that regard. Um, so you could use the marker light for that. You can also use the marker light to boost the ballistic skill of um, a group of broadsides, particularly if you're taking the uh, fire-based support cadre that has tank hunter uh, and you're shooting it at a flyer, not a flying monstrous creature, but a flying vehicle. Um, that might actually be a better use of um, the marker light if it's looking like it's going to take some time to take down. Uh, in other words, if you don't have any seeker missiles left, uh, use that marker light to uh, boost up some broadsides and take that thing down. It's almost, it's almost uh, guaranteed that a unit of broadsides should be able to take out a flyer as long as they have at least one marker light or, or so um, to help them out. 
Um, yeah, so really, Remora is a great asset for anti-air, provided they can stay alive, and that's a big caveat that I'll talk about in a minute here. Um, but one of the biggest assets that the Remora has is that it's shrouded. So that means it has a two-up jink, right? Because it has a four-up base from jinking plus two from shrouded. So a two-up jink is really uh, quite the the lulzy rules for uh, the Remora. You can just imagine it, you know, dipping and dodging and taking all sorts of evasive maneuvers uh, and laughing at your opponent all the while. Um, it also means, though, that the disruption pod, the, uh, you know, the darling of the Tau vehicle uh, array is uh, useless if you're jinking because you can't get it better than a two-up save. And it also um, is pretty useless if you're not jinking, right? Because a six-up cover save, who cares? Um, you know, uh, the the armor on this guy is so weak that you're almost always going to want to be jinking if, if there's any considerable number of shots or any few uh, anti-tank shots coming at it, right? So that's really the biggest con of the remora is that it's very fragile. So if you're jinking, that means a lot of your firepower is going to go to waste. Um, you're not going to be able to use your burst cannons effectively, your seeker missiles effectively, your marker light effectively because you're going to be snap firing everything all the time uh, if someone shoots at you. So that uh, kind of is a double-bladed or double-edged sword, right? Because a, you have a unit that's really hard to kill, and people are shooting at it. So that means it's t taking fire away from other potentially more valuable units. But it also means that it's not able to necessarily put out a lot of hurt. Um, so perhaps really the best use for Remora, because it's so fragile and is going to be need, needing to jink so often, is to be a late game scorer and a support unit when it has a, when it has a chance. So if someone doesn't shoot at it, great. You can shoot some uh, burst cannons and secret missiles and whatever. But you know if they do shoot at it and you jink, it's not a big loss. Um, and so perhaps your best uh, bet is to just always jink and use it to capture objectives at the end of the game because it can move, you know, really fast. It can get wherever you need it to be, drop in a hover mode if necessary, and claim an objective at the end of the game, which is awesome. Um, it also means you can kind of do a flying circus, keep away uh, strategy too, where you keep flying on and off the board uh, to keep him alive, and then just score at the end of the game too. That's a little bit of a cheesy move. Um, you know, you're kind of refusing to play the game, which is uh, can lead to kind of a feel bad experience, but it's an option. Um, yeah, so. That's kind of the way I view it. Um, I think the Remora is really good at objective scoring and offering support in the cases when it doesn't have to jink. Uh, but I'm not crying when a Remora has to jink. It's okay. Um, because, again, what I really want for is scoring at the end of the game. That's what matters, right? Uh, is, you know, after, after the end of the day, after, the, you know, turn five, turn six, turn seven, all you really care about is how many objectives you have. And the Remora can help you out with that pretty well. Uh, you do have an option to upgrade to a fighter ace using the Death from the Skies uh, book, which for this guy is pretty lackluster. On a roll of one to two, you have preferred enemy at the beginning of the game. Three, four, you have plus one cover again. Uh, it's basically the same thing as the dress disruption pod. It can't help you when you jank, and if you don't jank, it doesn't. It probably is not going to matter. On a roll of five or six, though, you get the ability to dish out D3 marker lights to every unit within 12 inches, which can be good. But really, really, uh, how many how many uh, units do you think that's really going to be? Eh, it's not that amazing. However, if you're going to be jinking anyway, uh, you know that's that's fine. Um, but for 50 points, which is the cost of the fighter race upgrade, not worth it. Um, I think the Remora is is good at 90 points, but if you jump up to 140 points, meh, not. I wouldn't I wouldn't sink the points into it. So, all right. Overall, what do I think? I think it's a fun, cheap flyer that is decent for support and even better for um, late game scoring because it is so difficult to kill if you don't have a 
opponent with Skyfire or ignores cover or ignore cover Skyfire, uh, it's hard to kill. But if they do have ignore cover Skyfire, then you're pretty much hosed. So <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a chance you're taking when you're taking the Remora. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, if, if they do have that, then it's um, pretty pretty uh, subpar, but you know, if they don't have that, then you're, you're sitting pretty. So, uh, you know, I've played a couple games with Remora. I like it. It's fun. It's a cool model. Uh, you know, if you're playing with Forge World, give it a shot. Uh, otherwise, if you just like the model, have fun with that too. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and happy war gaming.